I'm Lady T506. Welcome to my channel. Hello, everyone, everyone. I am here for Loving Hip Hop New York Season 9, Episode 8. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you're returning, you a family member, you one of my peoples over here, welcome back. So I'm just going to do this review as a uh, each person. I'm going to just get them out of the way instead of like going like how everything went in the episode. So we're going to start off with Yandy. She has gotten the judge's approval where in Infinity can come stay at her house until she gets all the paperwork of being her foster mother. She's already, you know, taking the steps. It's now it's like she can stay here legally and Yandy's not going to lose her kids or go to jail. But there are going to be some rules, like you will be doing your homework on time, and you will have a curfew. You're just not going to be just out here in these streets like that, no ma'am. And put your dishes away. If you eat a bowl of cereal, don't just put your bowl in the sink, your bowl in the spoon in the sink and keep it moving. No, rinse that out and put it in the dishwasher. If you're going to be having some chores, you're going to have some responsibilities over here. It's just not going to be you no know, free ride and all fun and giggles like it was before. It's not that kind of party. So, Judy, she not feeling this whole infinity stand at Yandy's house. Because, Yandy, do you really know this girl for real, for real? I don't think so. And you have her living in the house with my grandkids. That's another issue. And I'm like, I feel where Judy's coming from. Like, you're saying this is a troubled child. Is it really good to bring this troubled child into the home with your young children, my grandkids? But Judy says she doesn't know anything about Infinity except what she sees on Instagram. And she feels the in, um, Infinity is a spoiled child who just... She didn't say she needed her tail whoop, but I was reading between the lines. It's like she doesn't seem like she wasn't being taken care of like all the pictures that you see on Instagram. And I'm like... I understand where Judy's coming from because, like, if you were so, like, being mistreated and all that stuff, how is it she got a phone to call Yandy? Like, if you being mistreated and you not, you know, all that stuff, you're not going to have no phone in the foster, um, if you're living in a foster care, um, in a foster home. You're not going to have that. I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling Judy on that one, but she was like, yeah, I'm not really like, like, maybe you should have taken more time to get to know this little young lady before you brought her into your home. Maybe you should have done that, but Yanny's like, you know, she told me this horrible story of what was going on and how she was going to run away and this, that, and the third. I was like, I didn't think about this last week until now. I was like, okay, she had a phone to call you. It means she had access to the phone. It looked like she had the phone. If you been that mistreated in foster care, you wouldn't have a phone. But, you know, like, did you call this girl's mother? Did you call the foster mother to tell these people that she was going to be staying at your house? Yanny said she couldn't get a hold of the mama or the foster mama. I'm like, I could, I could see that because, you know, they probably busy. But, like, how much effort that you put into it and did you just take infinity's word like i'm being mistreated so badly that you didn't do all the information Cause it just seemed like she said i'm gonna run away and Gandy just scooped her up it, it was like after the fact that she was calling and trying to get a hold of people like the lawyer he was out of town so he was no help social worker she got dog on 30 more kids she got to take care of she wasn't available the foster mama may not been there so it was just like okay ain't nobody contacting me so i'm gonna take this child but eventually 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 yanny sits down with the mom now i'm thinking some name sound on right in this situation because if you if your child is in foster care I, if my child was in foster care, I wouldn't come on national TV saying, yeah, my child is in foster care, A, B, C, and D. But I was like, hmm, I'm trying to, I'm kind of questioning Infinity's story. And it was, you know, getting this, you know, she sat down with an open arm, you know, wanted to see what was going on. She wanted her blessings to become her foster mother. And the mom was like, that's all I wanted for my child. I have six children. I'm a single parent. And Infinity, she had, was always slipping out of the house. 
She waits while I fall asleep. She sneak out. She come back in three or four in the morning. She didn't want to listen. CPS was called and they were saying I was abusing my kids. Infinity went to go live with her mother. But grandma don't play. Like you going to be in this house. You going to be going to church. You going to go to school. You ain't going to be out here in these streets like that. Infinity didn't want to listen. Therefore, she had to go to foster care. Now, it wasn't that she'd been in foster care since she was a baby, newborn, like she told Yandy. Like, she'd been in there since November. She'd been in there, like, a year or so. So, she had a place to go, didn't want to stay with Grandma because she didn't want to follow the rules. Now, Yandy's getting a full picture, like, okay, I need to have a talk with this child because both of y'all stories is not matching. Infinity saying that she's been in foster care since a baby, the mother is saying, no, she got taken away and she was going to go stay with my mom, but she didn't want to listen over there. And then when Yandy finally talks to her, she going crazy because Infinity just hops out of the car while she's with her assistant. And I'm like, okay, see, uh -uh, how is this child just hopping out of the car? But I'm like, she mad. She didn't found out that Yandy was talking to her mom, but now she's like, okay, my whole plan is blown up. Yandy all walking up and down the street trying to find out where this girl is, and she fin eventually walks up, and Yandy's like, what are you doing? You don't know anybody around here. Anything could happen to you. But she's like, how could you go talk to my mama without telling me? I'm like, first of all, you a child. You 16 years old. I don't have to tell you a damn thing. What I'm doing if you stand in my house. She's like, your mother had nothing but kind words to say about you. So she's like, my mama's just doing that because she want to make herself feel better about the situation. She's like, well, your mom said that you just got in foster care. You haven't been in the system your whole life. You had a house to go to, which was grandma's house, where you would have been safe at. But you didn't want to do that, so you had to go to a foster home, which you've only been there, I'm just going to say a year. May have been less than that. But she's saying how the mama didn't care about her. Mama was too busy laying up with some man and laying up with some man getting drunk. And she is too, she had to grow up fast. And that the grades, these good grades she gets because she worked hard and she studied hard. Mama ain't had nothing to do with that. So I'm like, I don't really know who's telling the truth. But I do know that you lied and made it seem like you had this rough life. Now, you may have had this rough life, but you ain't had a rough life in the foster care system. But Yandy wants to let her know, like, I love you. I'm here for you. But you just can't be out here lying. Like, of course, I'm a, I would want to talk to your mama to let her know this is where your child is. But her being a child, she don't understand that. So we're going to move over to Joe because I didn't spend like seven and a half minutes talking about Yandy Infinity. But we just going to hope and pray that everything works out for them. So Joe and Sin go to therapy this oh wait, wait a minute oh he had started therapy some years ago because he was having some guilt about not being there for his first child now i don't know how my my notes got like scribbled up and like was saying something else but he was going to therapy some years ago because like the mother of his child they weren't working out and as a result, he wasn't there in the upbringing of his son. Now, it's like it's hard because Sin, he fell in love with Sin. That was his best friend. Now there's a baby into, now there's been a baby brought into this world and he doesn't want to repeat past mistakes. He doesn't want what she's going through and essentially what they're going through to separate them because he just can't handle that again. He's like, Sin, everything was fine. You know, they weren't trying to get pregnant, but then again, they weren't trying not to get pregnant. And now there's a baby in this world and he, she doesn't know how to handle things. So he needs help to see how to help her. So when Sin comes in, Joe steps out because like, I've said my piece and what's going on. Now you need to tell what's going on with you so you can work with what you got going. I can work with what I, what I have going on and we can work together as a family. So, Sin was saying how her issue is, and it seems like it's, it's anxiety. When she was younger, her mom was a single parent, worked like 20 hours a day, or like, I don't think that could be it, because, you know, you're going to sleep for four hours. Her mom worked a lot, and 
sin had to go to babysitters and she her mother thought that these were some people that she could trust her child with and sin was um molested as a child she was molested by a woman so now that's putting fear on her it's like i have a child now and i don't want anybody to hurt my child like i was hurt that's why I don't want to get a nanny. I don't want to get a babysitter. Now I under now, I understand this now because I was like, "You gonna drive yourself crazy if you always got this baby." But she was molested, and she just thinks, "Okay, what if this happens to my child?" And that's just in her head, constantly like, "Oh my goodness, I need to protect my child." It all means nobody can hurt him, and that's kind of put causing a wedge between them because. She wants them to be together, but she doesn't want to leave the child. Therefore, they can't have their time together. All this anxiety is, like, causing a lot for you, girl. And she finally realizes that. I was like, okay, Stan, we realize what's going on. Joe knows what's going on. Her mom didn't know what was going on. And I guess the mom, either she told her beforehand or her mom found out as we found out. And that's what's going on with her. The anxiety of feeling like somebody can hurt my child like I was hurt. So we're just going to hope and pray that sin gets better and everything. So we're moving over to Sydney. Now, Sydney and Jonathan, they know each other. So they go to have drinks. And Sydney's saying how things are not going well for her with her music because Rich and Jaque just don't think she has it and she wants to be the next Cardi B and when I tell you Jonathan looked into this girl's soul and asked do you have Cardi B talent like looked pierce her into her soul and asked that question because when she said that I'm like no but we gonna in indulge you if you will and Jonathan's like okay you know spit me a little something something so she does, does her normal rap that she does. And me and Jonathan, and I'm going to say a lot of other people like, no, boo-boo, you don't have Cardi B's, Cardi, B, Cardi B skills. So Jonathan and his whole confession was being shady, and I loved it. He's like, no, mm -mm, I'm just going to walk out on this one because, no, man, we're not finna to do this. Like, maybe Sydney should just go ahead and give this up. I don't see it for her as a rapper. She's trying her best, but to me, she just doesn't have it. And, like, when I tell you, Jonathan looked into her soul to let her know, baby, this just is not it for you. So, Jonathan is having, like, he was doing makeup for the strippers back in the day, and now he's having, like, some sort of class. And I'm just going to say, sometimes you just can't help people because Sydney showed up. And a revamped version of the dress that Naya gave her. Now, we not, we all agree that Naya is no fashion guru. But she is trying to help out Sydney. But Sydney, she's just not getting it up in here. For whatever reason, she feels that to be a woman, you have to show skin. You got to show breasts. You got to show thighs. You got to show all this. And you can be sexy and classy at the same time, and she just don't get that. And Naya's like, I'm just trying to help you out, girl. Now, Naya, you trying to help, but you know you're not the best person to go to, but I appreciate you trying to help her out. These two get to going back and forth, back and forth, if I can talk. At one point, Cindy was up there bucking at Naya now. Naya looked a little hood to me. Which I just really wish she would get rid of those wigs. I really do. Her and that doggone it fade she had. It it helped with her features. These wigs, we just not gonna go through with it. Her trying to be helping with fashion, I appreciate it. But she she's not a fashion guru to me. But I was like, why why are we why are we bucking up at night when night is just trying to help you, girl? Just take this woman's advice, okay? So, let's move on because I didn't jump around. Okay, we didn't talk about that. I apologize, you guys. Okay, we did that. Let's move over to Rich. His ex-wife has shot her husband. He, She shot her husband like a few months back. The husband, he's like, he's not going to press charges. 
But that's not up to him. He can say like, okay, I'm not pressing charges. And the state is like, well, we're going to press charges where you want us to or not. And we're going to subpoena you because we, you know, we're going to take this to trial and make us a little money and go to jail. And like a lot's going on. She could be, it went from um, attempted murder. Then it was dropped down to like second degree assault or something like that. The daughter's stressed out because now this is affecting her financial aid for school because when she applied, mom and stepdad they were cool they did that together now they're no longer together she need, had like 45 minutes to pay her tuition or she wasn't gonna be able to go to her classes and he's getting bits and pieces of what's going on after the fact he already knew well i don't know if he knew or not that the dude was no good like what i was getting was you went through a lot of stuff with this man and you didn't want to hurt his reputation and then one day things went left he ended up getting shot and then come to find out the daughter was the one who helped him to the hospital like he's finding out that his daughter is covering her little sister's ears because mom and stepdaddy in the other room fussing and fighting with each other everything's going on and like rich he's like upset because He's like, if I hadn't let, never left Memphis, this never would have happened. We would have been a family. But I was like, she wouldn't have those other kids. If she got other kids with him, she wouldn't have those kids. So that's just saying, like, we bumped in, we ain't there. But I'm pretty sure he didn't mean that. Like, he's upset. He's crying. He's like, I love y'all, but we need to get this together. But Miracle, she doesn't act like somebody that's going to prison. She's just kind of like, we just going to pray about it. He's like, uh-uh, that's, that's just not going to cut it. Yeah, your husband was abusing you was up there trying to um you know salvage his reputation when behind closed doors he was going oops upside your head allegedly we gonna say that shout out to alexander Roger. now i can't hear the word allegedly without doggone us doing his allegedly song but that ain't got nothing to do with what we got going on right here but he's saying we just gonna have to get this together because if i had known 15 years ago this was going to happen i would have told you you don't need to be with that man don't do it no exit stage left do not pass go do not collect your 200 dollars. this is not it and like the daughter doesn't even know the severity that was going on she's just basically like girl it's tired it's okay you have to let her know i might be going to jail i could be going to jail i may not like get no time or i can get like 15 20 years we just don't know. But, like, if there's evidence of past abuse, if that day that he was beating on you when you took a gun, I don't know. But we just going to hope everything works out for them. And, you know, I mean, she's probably going to get some time because she did shoot him. I don't know about the laws in Mississippi. I think that's ours at Memphis. Wherever they from, I don't know. So, y'all... That was basically the gist. If I left anything out, but all things I was going to do, I was just going to have everything in its own slot. And that's what I was going to do. So, that was basically it. Oh. Joe. Now, y'all know Joe been working a lot. And Sin has been complaining up, down, left, to right, and all around that Joe is not being there for her. And the one time that he takes off that romantic night... She out there clubbing with, um, uh, what's his name? Jonathan, and I'm wanting to say Naya. Why he got candlelights at home. Okay, so anyway, that was the just. If I left me thinking, I'll bother me and leave a comment below. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Feel free to subscribe. It is free all day, every day. If you're returning, you one of my family members, you one of my peoples, go ahead and tell your peoples and tell their peoples, come over and be one of my peoples. This is Lady T signing off. Have a good one.